Wow, we covered a lot of information today. Now it's time to see how much you've actually learned. Hopefully something. We're going to do four practice problems in a row. You'll have one minute each to do them, and I want you to do them one right after another, and I'll show you the answers at the end. Are you ready? Let's start.
Take it to take it to times up, folks. Let's go over question one. If AB equals BC and line BD bisects line AC in the figure above, which of the following cannot be concluded? All right. So the problem is initially telling us two things about triangle ABC. First, that AB equals BC. That means that we have an isosceles triangle. Yes! Think back to our law of proportions. What does that tell us about the two opposite angles? Do they have to equal each other, or is one larger than the other? No, they have to equal each other. That's what the law of proportions tells us. When two sides are equal in length, then the opposite angles are equal in measure. So W equals Z. Let's mark that on our diagram. Then second, the problem tells us that BD bisects AC. And what does bisects mean? It means divided exactly in half. So then AD is equal to DC. Let's mark that accordingly. Okay, so now let's look at our answer choices and eliminate the one that cannot be concluded from what we know. Answer choice A, Z equals Y, can that be concluded from the information given? If Z were equal to Y, that would mean that BD is equal to DC. And we haven't been given any indication that that is the case. So let's leave answer choice A as a potential candidate. Now let's move on to answer choice B, W equals Z. Well remember, we already concluded that that is true and marked it in our diagram. Duh. So that means that we can eliminate answer choice B since W equals Z can be concluded. Now C says X equals Y. Let's take a look at our diagram. X and Y are opposite AD and DC, which are equal to each other. So we know through the law of proportions that then X must equal Y. So eliminate answer choice C. Get it out of here. D says AD equals DC. That's already marked on our diagram, so cross that off. Lastly, BD is perpendicular to AC. How do we know if this is true or not? If you look at our picture, you kind of see that BD looks perpendicular to AC. But how do we know for sure? Well, X equals Y and W equals Z. So that must mean that the remaining two angles equal each other as well. Since they form a straight line, they must both be 90 degrees making line BD definitely perpendicular to AC. But even if you can't reason that out, notice that this picture doesn't have a note underneath that says, diagram not drawn to scale, so you can reliably trust that if BD looks perpendicular to AC, then it is. So eliminate answer choice E, leaving us with the only answer choice that we could not conclude from the information given to us, answer choice A. Now question two. All right, to find the area of the shaded portion, let's find the area of the entire inscribed circle first. We know that the circle is inscribed in a square with a side length of four. So then you know that the diameter of the inscribed circle must be four as well, making the radius two. Perfecto! Now we can plug that into our area formula to find the area of the circle. Remember, area equals pi r squared. So plug 2 in for r to get pi times 2 squared, which equals 4 pi. Hmm, 4 pi. Now, to find the area of just the shaded portion, it's just 3 fourths of the total area. We know this because the white triangle is 1 fourth of the area of the square. So multiply 4 pi by 3 fourths, and the fours cancel each other out, and you get 3 pi. Not as good as 
4 pi. Mm. Look through the answer choices and aha! The answer choice is E, our correct answer. Moving on to question 3. Two sides of a triangle each have length 5. All of the following could be the length of the third side except... This question asks us to draw upon our triangle inequality knowledge. The triangle inequality law says that the length of any side of a triangle must be less than the sum of the two other sides or x plus y is greater than z. So, if we're told that this triangle has two side lengths of 5, then the third side must be smaller than 5 plus 5, which is 10. So, z is less than 10. So, of all the answer choices, the only answer that could not be the length of the third side is what? It's e, 10. Remember that the third side cannot equal the sum of the other two. It has to be less than the sum of the other two sides. So answer choice E is correct. Last but not least, question 4. In the xy coordinate plane, what is the area of the square with opposite vertices at negative 2, negative 2, and 1, 1. Let's quickly sketch this so we have an idea of what we're working with here. So it might look something like this. Area of a square is length times width. To find the width of a square, let's subtract the x-coordinates. So 1 minus negative 2 gives us positive 3. Well, since it's a square, we know that the length is also 3. So using the area formula, 3 times 3 equals 9, making answer choice B correct. All right now, it's the moment you've all been dreading or waiting for. Depends how much you like this tutorial video, but I'm sure you love it, so you're dreading it. I hate it, but we're coming to a close. This is the end of the math tutorial series of this video. And I know, it's sad, but hey, we got to go at some point, right? I'll still be here for you. Jake will still be here for you. If you guys want to come chat with us again, and by chat I mean watching the screen, then turn on the video and come review these concepts that we went over together. You can watch them at any time. It's an excellent, free, easily available resource for you. And just because we're done with the video series, doesn't mean the party's got to stop, you know what I'm saying? We'll practice the strategies in this series and cover many more in our live workshops. So you can select and reschedule your workshops at myesat.com to target your personal needs and fit your unique schedule. But until then, hasta la vista, baby.